babe. See, how about little... Ow! Does that answer your question, buddy? The Adventures of Maisie, starring Ann Southern. <laughs> You all remember Metro Golden Mayor's famous Maisie picture. In just a moment, you'll hear Maisie in radio, starring the same glamorous star you always see and loved on the screen, and Southern. But first, you're enough. <laughs> I'm Maisie, like the man said. I don't ask anything of life, and I don't get anything. Well, that's sort of breaking even, ain't it? I guess when I was a kid, I was vaccinated with a road map, because as far back as I can remember, I've been traveling. <laughs> right now, I'm in Reno. Oh, no, not for the usual reason. I ain't never been married yet. Also, I've been kicked around a lot by men of the opposite sex. And the way I figure it, there's only two kinds of men. Those you can trust, and the majority. Anyway, here I am in Reno looking for the Blue Peacock Club. My agent got me a job there as a singer. I'm supposed to sing sad songs to make ex-wives and ex-husbands homesick. So they'll hurry home, marry somebody else, and then come back to Reno and start all over again. Ouch! Say, hey, why, why don't, don't you, you look where you... You? Jack Fuller. Maisie Revere. Say, Say what, what are you doing? doing? <laughs> <laughs> Ladies first, Dad. What are you doing in Reno, the world's most famous separation center? Well, it's this way, Maisie. I married a girl. Well, you couldn't have made a better choice. It ain't funny, McGee. You see, I love her. Oh, I'm sorry, Jack. Care to tell me about it? Well, it's this way, Maisie. Mm -hmm. I met Gloria. That's my wife. Mm -hmm. Right after I quit the job at the airplane factory you and I worked at. Oh, yeah. I remember that place. You were vice president in charge of training boat number 268. And I was in charge of 269. That is until the explosion. <laughs> <laughs> I liked you, Maisie. A lot. Mm. You were different. Yeah. But Gloria was different, huh? Yeah. Say, this isn't the place to pour out my heart. Uh, how's about a soda, Maisie? Love to. I'm a little dry after walking across the great American desert. You walked? Sure. The railroad only sells tickets to people with money. Some silly rule they got. Mm, golly, you must be real thirsty. Well, I could use a drink. I stopped off at a little mirage, but they were closed for lunch. <laughs> well, come on. Yeah, what will it be, folks? I'll just have a Coke. What about you, miss? Well, I'll have a double chocolate sundae with coconut, mm, and uh, whipped cream, marshmallow... Bananas and some shredded nuts. No cherry? Well, of course not. You think I want to get sick? I hate myself for asking. One hash frozen. And that's the story, Maisie. You see, after the wedding, I found out that Gloria wasn't exactly penniless. She had a fortune. That was terrible. Some terrible, I'll say. You see, her father was from Texas. He was a millionaire. Well, naturally. Well, when we got married, she agreed to live on what I make. Oh, I do all right. But one day... You had a fight. Yeah. Mm. How did you know we had a fight? Well, that's obvious. You were married. Yeah. <laughs> but this wasn't just a plain little disagreement. You see... Here's your coke, mister. And here's your little tidbit, miss. Thanks. Hey, wait a minute, Sonny. I can't eat this. Who can? You forgot a spoon. Oh, here you are, miss. Coconut, whipped cream, marshmallow. Now, Jack, where were we? Up to the breakup, I think. Mm. Maisie, I can't feel your Gloria's change of heart. She still loves me. I'm sure of it. Oh, yeah? Then why is she going to court tomorrow for a divorce? Look, Sonny, nobody asks you. Yeah. Maisie, you've just got to stop her from getting that divorce. Stop her? How can I stop her? Yeah, how can she stop her? Well, well I don't... Ah, come on, Maisie. Let's get out of here and go someplace where we can talk undisturbed. Here's your money, Long Ears. Yeah, so long, Mr. Anthony. Sorry we can't stay for you to hear the rest. 
But this conversation is calculated to keep you in suspense. Hey, miss, you left your gum parked on the stool. Oh, that's all right. If I don't call for it in 30 days, it's yours. Well, you haven't answered the question yet, Jack. How am I supposed to stop the divorce? I don't know, but you've got to do it. Even if you have to kidnap Gloria. But kidnapping's a federal offense, honey. Besides, I won't have the time. I got a job. Look, Maisie, I love her. Oh, dear. Well, how's about starting at the beginning and let me in on a few of the details? Like, what's all this about, hmm? Well, Gloria was away visiting Daphne Ashburn when, well, all of a sudden her letters stopped. Daphne Ashburn? Uh-huh. That don't listen like a gal you can trust. Could be. You see, Daphne's a distant relation, a cousin twice removed. Yeah, but she wasn't removed far enough, huh? If Daphne's mixed up in this, I haven't been able to find it out. And I've tried. I tried to see Gloria and get an explanation. And she wouldn't see you? She had me thrown out of her hotel for pestering her. Well, why don't you write her a letter? I've written dozens. I don't believe she gets them. In fact, Maisie, I'm convinced something funny is going on. And I want you to move into that hotel and find out. Hotel? Jack, when you move into a hotel, they always ask embarrassing questions. Like, when are you going to pay your bill? I'll take care of the expenses. Now, here. Here's a letter I've written, and if Gloria reads it, I think she'll give up this idea of a divorce. Some way I want you to get it to her and see that she reads it. In person. Well, I'll try, but I'm not... Maisie, you've got to. You've got to find out who's poisoning Gloria's mind against me. You've got to stop that divorce. But, Jack, you're asking me to be a detective, a regular private eye. Please, Maisie, it means so much to me. Please. Well, all right. But I've got a feeling that this may be one private eye that's headed for a punch in the nose. Oh, come in, Jerry. I came as soon as you called in the no. Woo, woo, Gee, must be this new sweater I'm wearing, Jerry. Your eyes are bumping against your glasses. Uh -uh. Oh, here's the ice you ordered, Macy. Well, you better put it on your forehead, Jerry. You look like you're running the temperature. Oh, uh... (laughs) Say, Jerry, maybe I can use you. Huh? I mean, I'd like you to do me a favor over and above your line of duty. Well, I'm off duty at five. No, no, I don't mean that. Oh. Listen, Jerry. Hmm. I gotta see a certain woman in this hotel. Do you know Mrs. Gloria Fuller? Gloria? Oh, sure, Maisie, sure. Of course, I don't like that Miss Daphne Ashbourne that's always hanging around, or that oily Dr. Clay. Dr. Clay? Yeah, yeah, he's a doctor that treats Gloria. Oh. Only I, I can't see anything wrong with her, except maybe she's always sort of sleepy. Sleepy? Mm-hmm. Jerry. How, how can I get him to see her? Well, uh, her husband was snooping around here till they threw him out, and it's a rule not to let anybody in to see her. Oh, please, Jerry. Wouldn't you fix it? Just for little old me. Oh, when you flutter your little old eyelashes like that at me, mm. I'm your man. <laughs> uh, look, it, it's, it's the big suite at the end of the hall. Yeah, at the end of the hall. Yeah. I'm supposed to bring up Miss Gloria's mail about now. I'm a little late, so it's... If you were to knock on the door, well, there you are. Oh, thank you, Jerry. And one more thing. Well, what's Gloria Fuller like? Oh, she's a sweetie pie. Is it, say she ain't, ain't, ain't wanted by Uncle Sam. No, by Brother Jack. Excuse me, Mrs. Fuller, but... I thought you were Jerry, the bellboy. Well, who are you? I'm Maisie Revere, and I'm a good pal of your husband, and he loves you and wants you to read this letter, and he's such a swell guy. I think you're a fool if you're divorcing Gloria, and... Hey, wait a minute. You are Gloria Fuller, aren't you? This is her room, isn't it? Yeah. Well, uh, I'm supposed to give you this letter if you are. So, here it is. Thank you, but I'm sure it's no different from any of Jack's other letters. Now, if you'll excuse me... Oh, no, no. I I was supposed to make sure you read it in person. I promised Jack I wouldn't leave till you read it. Oh, so. very well. <laughs> yes. Yes, just as I expected. Very well, you can tell Mr. Fuller that you kept your promise. And you'll see him and talk to him? Yes, in the divorce court tomorrow. Oh. Now, will you please leave? Gee, you know, from what Jack and Jerry told me, I thought you'd be different. 
Different? What do you mean, different? Well, they said you were a sweetie pie. But to me, you turned out to be all crust. Such nerve. Why, you insolent cheap. Cheap? Look, sister, I've been called lots of things in my time. I'll bet you have. (gasps) Now, please leave. I'm expecting friends for lunch. Don't worry, Tootsie. I'm leaving. And be careful with that lunch. Don't tip over your saucer of milk. Well. How do you figure that one, Daphne? Clay, did you hear it all? I happened to be bending over to tie my shoelace, and my ear came flush up to the keyhole. Say, what if Gloria heard it? Oh, not a chance. Not with the sleeping pill I gave her. She'll be out for another half hour. Good. Now, here's another letter. Can you take it up to your room and fix it up before she wakes up? Naturally. I'll even have it fixed up before the beautiful Maisie gets through reporting back to Gloria's true loving husband. <laughs> And I just wish I could hear what she has to say about the girl she thinks is the real Gloria. Jerry, I've yes. been looking for you for two hours. Oh, well, I, I've been trying to help you solve this case, Maisie. So for the last couple hours, I've been upstairs peeping in at Miss Gloria's keyhole. Oh, did you find anything out, Jerry? Yes. She has a birthmark oh, on her. Oh, never mind. See, if I didn't give my solemn promise to Jack, I'd call the whole thing off. The next time I run into little Gloria, I hope I'm driving a truck. Oh, gosh, but you wouldn't want to hurt Miss Gloria. Why, she's a doll. She's she's out of this world. And I wish she'd stay out. Imagine that hunk of living proof that cousins shouldn't marry calling me cheap. Oh, well, gosh, Maisie, she sure looks like an angel. Just look at her over there. Where? I don't see her. Sitting at that table right over there. But that's not the woman I talked to. I mean, Jerry, who's that tall willowy girl coming to the table? Well, that's Miss Daphne Ashbourne. Oh, it is. And she told me she was Gloria Fuller, the female female impersonator. Maisie, where are you going? Well, now we'll see who can call me cheap. Say, you. This is the one, Gloria. Are you Gloria Fuller? Yes, I am, Miss Revere. Well. Now I smell a rat. Oh, you do? Yes, rat. Gloria, did you know that this this woman passed herself off as you and she read a letter from your husband and Jack's one of the nicest guys in the world? Yes, Miss Ashburn told me all about your visit at my suite. Oh, she told you, huh? Telephone call, Miss Ashburn. You can take it in the alcove there. Oh, no, thank you, Jerry. I'll take it in my room. Well, I hope you're satisfied, Miss Peroxide of 1950. Peroxide? Why, I... Miss Revere, please. Gee, what she makes me think of her. I could wash out my mind with DDT. Miss Revere, I try not to think badly of anyone. So I suppose you don't know what was in Jack's letter. Well, I didn't read it like old Needle knows. But I know he really loves you. He does? Mm-hmm. Really? Yeah. Oh, no. No, he couldn't. In every letter he's written me lately, he's demanded money. A lot of money. That's why I broke off with him. Oh, I don't believe it. Well, here's the letter you brought. Here, I'll show you. Let me see. I don't love you so you can have your freedom. But I demand a 50-50 split of every cent you've got. Wait a minute. Is this Jack's writing? I'd know it anywhere. Oh, and dopey me. I thought he was a swell guy. I used to think so, too. Oh, gee, I'm, I'm sorry I bothered you, Gloria. And please, if I were you, I wouldn't let this hurt me too much. It does hurt us. Maybe I'm not as stout-hearted as you. Oh, sure. Stout-hearted Maisie, that's me. A heart of oak and a head to match. Well, I'll tell that Jack Fuller a thing or two. Didn't you like him, Maisie? Where's the phone booth, Jerry? Oh, uh, right around this corner. I'll tell that Jack Fuller what a heel he is. Here's a phone booth, Maisie. Oh, only there's somebody in it. But I tell you, Daphne, I'm not crazy. Yes. Jerry, that boy. Who is it? Sounds like Dr. Clay. I tell you no, Daphne. No. Uh-huh. And he's talking about Miss Daffy, Daphne Ashford. <laughs> I was gambling, yes. And I've got to have some money. Now, look. You put 200 in an envelope and have Jerry the bellboy bring it to my room. Uh-oh. Uh, why do you worry about money? We'll have plenty as soon as we get control of the Fuller Dame. Sure. Call Jerry right away. Jerry, you're behind the booth. Yeah, Maisie. There he goes. Well, I guess I won't call Jack Fuller after all. Jerry, something's wrong here, and I'm going to find out about it. Yeah, and I'll help you, Maisie, as soon as I take that money to Dr. Clay. Wait a minute. You're not going to take it to him, Jerry. I am. 
Well, but maybe I don't trust Dr. Claves. I don't like him. I don't like him either, Jerry. But before I get through with him, I think he's going to like me. You see, I know men. Really? How did you find out so much about men, Maisie? <laughs> I refuse to answer that, Jerry, on the grounds that it might incriminate me. The Adventures of Maisie, starring Anne Southern, will continue in just a moment. <laughs> As you worded, Maisie. Uh, hey, where's Dr. Claves? Under the table. Gee, on only 12 zombies? <laughs> and you should have seen him after number 11. He just sat there like Whistler's mother, rocking. <laughs> Did he talk? Yes, yeah, he talked plenty. Oh, good, good. Oh, oh by the way, the, the barman said if I didn't get Dr. Claves to sign the bill for all those drinks, he'd, he'd bust me one of the mush. I hate to wake him, but I... I well, we might as well. Here, I'll do it. Dr. Claves. Dr. Claves, wake up. Time for your DTs, honey. Uh, uh, what's that? Oh, beautiful Maisie. Where you been all my life? Hmm, this is where I came in. Uh, uh, Dr. Claves, uh, would you please sign for these drinks? Are you able to sign for them, Dr. Claves? Who, me? Oh, I right, sure, hmm. sure, sure. Here's a pencil. I don't need but one pencil. I'm only handing you one. Hmm. Do you think you can sign, Dr. Claves? Huh? Why, if Claves can't sign, who can? I'm, I'm an expert signer. Here. Mm. There. Uh, here are two more to sign. Mm. There. And there. Yeah. Thank you for signing. Uh, same to you, old pal. Drop in any time. Oh, he's out again. Yeah. You better make sure you can read his signature, Dad. Oh, sure, sure. I can read it, Maisie. I'll say one thing. He sure writes a beautiful hand. He... He waved. Well? These signatures are all different, Maisie. Huh? I mean, same name, but not the same. Gary, are you sure you didn't sample one of those zombies? No, 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 look. Yeah, that's strange. One's all flowery and curly cute, and one's backhand, and one's a... Gary. Yeah, Maisie, yeah? Dr. Claves is a forger. And look, here's a brand new blotter he used to blot a letter. And see if you can read what it says. Uh, it's all backwards like. Well, look, I I'll hold it up here to the mirror and you read it. Ah. There. W what did it say? Uh, well, 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 oh, it, it says, um, uh, uh, Dear Gloria, mm -hmm, yeah. I don't love you so you can have your freedom. Go on, Jerry, yeah. But I demand a 50 50 split of every cent you've got. That is it. Jerry, that's it. Sure, sure. What, what's what? Dr. Clave took the real letter Jack Fuller wrote to Gloria and he wrote this one instead. Oh. Now, listen, Jerry. Here's what we'll do. Uh, yeah, Maisie? We'll, we're, we're, we're going to take this bar to the police as evidence. Uh -huh. You get us a taxi while I call Jack and tell him to meet us at the police station. Right. And hold the cab till I get downstairs. Right. I'm on my way. Hello, operator. Operator. Yes. I want the hotel bell bill in a hurry. Mr. Jack Fuller, please. Drop that phone. Huh? You heard me. Go away, honey. Only one thing will stop me from making this call. Drop that phone or I shoot. That's the one thing. Miss Ashburn. Is that thing in your hand? It sure is, and I know how to shoot it, too. No, you don't. Don't try to hide that blotter. Hand it to me or I'll... Sure, sure. Who needs a dirty old blotter? Don't play possum with me, honey. So you're on to Claves and his penmanship act, eh? Yeah, and you can't get away with this, darling. Oh, so, can't I? No, you can't. I'll call the police. I'll... You'll do nothing because you'll be lying here on the floor bound and gagged. You wouldn't dare. Oh, no? I'll do even more. Just to give you something to occupy your mind, I will tell you what Claves and Gloria and I will be doing while you're lying here. Maisie, Maisie, the taxi's been waiting for an hour. Did you get tied up? Uh, mm -hmm. Holy mm -hmm. smoke, you did get tied mm -hmm. up. 
Uh, 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 here, Maisie, uh, let, let me take off this gag. There. What happened? Well, that Daphne Ashburn came in here with a gun, and she slapped Claves so she got him on his feet. One time I had to see Jerry. Oh, oh, sure, sure. Well, I, while I was lying there tied up, she called Judge Carter and asked him to hear Gloria's divorce in his chambers today and serve tomorrow. Jerry, we got to work fast. Well, well you just tell me what to do, Maisie. Well, go to the hotel, the hotel Belleville and tell Jack to get over to, to the judge's chambers fast. Right, right, but Maisie, where are you going? Well, it's probably already too late, but I'm going to try to stop that divorce. <laughs> There being no further testimony and evidence in the case of Fuller versus Fuller, the court is inclined to enter a bill of divorcement in favor of the plaintiff. Now, Mrs. Gloria Fuller, if you'll just step to my desk and sign. Yes, Judge Carter. I object. Your Honor, I object. And just who might you be, young woman? Well, I'm a friend of the goon. I mean, the groom. I mean, divorcee. I, I mean I'm a friend of Jack Fuller, and he loves Gloria, and she doesn't really want a divorce if she only knew the facts. May the we case. have order, and, please? And... Although these are my private chambers, this is still a court of law. Mrs. Fuller, do you know this young woman? Well, I've seen Judge her. Carter, she's pestered Gloria before. She's a cheap, phony blonde. Phony! I'll show you the roots. I'll show you my baby pictures. Your Honor, would you allow me to speak for a moment as a doctor? I'll allow anybody to speak if they'll clear up this nonsense. All right, Dr. Claves. Thank you. This young woman is Macy Revere. Hmm. I had a chance to observe her very closely earlier today when she came to me as a patient. I went to you as a patient. You were blotto and flat on your back. What? What is this? Please, Your Honor, I'm, dem I'm demonstrating something, so I ask you to listen closely. Now, Macy, just how would you describe me to Judge Carter here? I'd describe you as the heel who's been forging letters to make Gloria believe her husband is after her money. Oh, that sounds fantastic. As you can see, Your Honor, this is obviously an acute case of hyperephronia. That's a lie. I never had anything but the measles. No, no, no. There, now, Macy, just, just be calm now. Well, Do you know the meaning of hyperephronia? Well, no. But I've been vaccinated and I can prove it. No, never mind. Hey, hey, wait a minute. Is what does it mean? Suppose you tell her, Your Honor. Well, I, uh, well, that is to say, I'm not too familiar with some of these uh, technical medical terms, uh, uh, but uh, I take it it means that a person... Exactly, Your Honor. As yes. nutty as a fur-lined fruitcake. Now, wait a minute. Judge, you don't think I'm off my trolley, do you? You're not even near the track. Now, just a well, minute. Well, you came in here in a most fantastic manner, and you've made some exceedingly wild statements which are unsupported by evidence. There, darling. Please, Stephanie. However, the court does not leave such matters to chance. Ah, there for you, darling. May we have order. As I was saying, the court's principal interest here is in seeing justice done to the person most concerned. Mrs. Fuller. Yes, Judge Carter. Now, I want you to consider your answer carefully, my dear. Do you want a divorce from your husband, Jack Fuller? Well, I... Of course I... you do, Gloria. You know all the things we've planned. Well, I... Well, Mrs. Fuller? Well, I did love him, Judge, but... Yes, I do want a divorce. All right, my dear. Just sign Just here. Just a minute, and... Gloria. You still love your husband. He never did anything bad to you in his life, and all he wants is a chance. I don't, I don't. I did love him, but no... Okay, I... okay. If you don't want Jack Fuller, I do. The way he kisses... Well... I object, to Your Honor. <laughs> I always do, too, but Jack is so convinced. It's not true. Jack wouldn't look at another woman. You see, Judge, I told you she still loves him. Maisie, Maisie. Oh, Jerry, where's Jack? He wasn't in, so I left the message. And on the way over, I stopped at the police station to check on Dr. Clay. Yeah. You what? Jerry, quickly. They want him for forge, we don't say. Well, no, Maisie, they don't. Ah, uh -huh. uh, you see, now, Your Honor. He's only wanted for grand larceny, embezzlement, swindling widows and orphans, and practicing medicine without a license. Well, come on, Daphne, let's get out of here. Oh, stop him, Your Honor, stop him! They won't get far, Maisie. Maisie? Maisie, I saw Dr. Clay's and Daphne running down the corridor. Is anything... Gloria. Oh, Jack, Jack! Uh, Gloria, did you... Did you? No, she didn't, young man. And you can thank Maisie here for saving her for you. Oh, shucks, it was nothing, kids. And Gloria, as far as Jack and me and that kissing stuff, <laughs> that was also nothing. Oh, Maisie, you're a real pal. The best pal a guy ever had. And you and I and Gloria are going to have some real times together, just <laughs> the three of us. Huh, Gloria? You will forget all this stuff that happened. All right, darling. Uh... But on one condition. I'll do anything, honey, anything. I don't trust a real close pal as beautiful as Maisie here. You don't mind, do you, Maisie? Oh, of course not, honey. Sometimes when I'm with a handsome man, I don't trust myself either. <laughs> so? 
So what? Well, if you even so much as smile at me again, she'll come right back here to Reno. Right, Slow? Right, Maisie. <laughs> Jack and I are going back home for a second honeymoon. Oh, but, Maisie, what about you? Oh, don't be silly, Jackie. What would I do on your honeymoon? <laughs> the moment we shall return to the adventures of Maisie. Jackie and Gloria went back to Texas. Golly, those kids sure are proud of Texas. And I guess maybe they should be. After all, the United States is part of it. <laughs> Too bad the court couldn't do anything about little Daphne. She hadn't broken the law, only bends a little. But that wolf in she's clothing will be getting what's coming to her, no matter where she's run off to. There's one thing about being a louse. No matter where you go, you've got to take yourself with you. Well, come on, sweet. We still gotta find that nightclub. Gosh, I sure am tired from all that walking. Golly, why can't people be born with their feet higher up so they won't have to keep pounding the pavement? You've just heard The Adventures of Maisie, starring Anne Southern. Maisie is presented by arrangement with Metro Goldwyn Mayer, producers of Battleground, starring Van Johnson, John Hodiak, Ricardo Montalban, and George Murphy. <laughs> Maisie was written by Arthur Phillips. Original music was composed and conducted by Harry Zimmerman. Supporting cast included Sidney Miller, Hugh Studebaker, Stanley Waxman, Mary Schiff, Bob Cole, Jerry Hausner, and Rhoda Williams. Jack McCoy speaking.